as you see there it's working oh, I am powering this off just off this PSU here don't have the uh, don't have the USB plugged in but what I'm doing I'm taking two wires well there's 12 volts going in here off the PSU hmm, the ambit seems to drop there from earlier on Going backwards there, so that's finishing off. Let me restart that. Well, two wires are coming to this book converter. Oh, that's dropping down. This is adjustable. Well, I've dropped down the checked it with a multimeter, the output voltage to five volts, and the five volts is then going to this wires to this barrel jack that's plugging in the Arduino under here. Arduino Uno. Now I reckon it would be possible to, because this sticks out quite far, that barrel jack there, it would be possible to connect the wires underneath. See those there, uh, three contacts there. Bit of hacking on them, with some wires directly on there. Oops. Carefully, everything's sliding about all over. Now, why is that going in reverse? Shouldn't it have been that quick. So, just reset that. So, normally, it does this because it's at the limit of its beginning. That's like a warning thing. But when that lights up it turns let me move this over so we can see both if we can see that so the led lights and it turns at the same time that to signal that the led well that, that motor is turning show you that the rewind is saying that goes re reverse that's on the timer going forward again and I can press forward on the button as well that's reached the limit there in the software like and then I ask it to rewind all the way the number of turns that's gone forward basically well go to its starting position that's what I'm asking for. So that's one way to power it off a single thing. I know this is Heath Robinson. I need to tidy this up, especially the wires here, because as I say in my previous video, these are all, well, nearly all pins, whereas on, on Arduino, the like sockets that you plug in, but these are pins sticking up that you'll have to use different plugs for. Thank you whoever made this board, why have you made it that way I don't know. Or oh, there's my printer finishing off something I'm printing. So if you look at my other video and I provide the code for this. I'll probably put the code for this uh, in the description as this description of this video as well. I just want to give you an update there. So I've just been testing that to make sure it works before I print out the box. This is an earlier box I did. Well, this is a lid of it. Um, I'm printing out a new one. Well, I'll be printing out a new one. We'll have to allow space for the book converter. So you can get book converters and you can get boost converters. Book converters knock down the voltage both converters knock up the voltage and you can get a combination of both which I have had in the past and those have been I used to use like a PSU going through a, one of these book boost converters and I could turn the voltage right down to about half a volt right up to about 30 volts off uh, a PSU there and that worked quite well until it got shorted out so I bought a more 
professional one. This works, see the old down, see, as I said, switches on and off the motor. Oh, that's going all the way in my mind. Start it up again. So one thing, advantage with this is not using any power or very little power. Just sort of for the Arduino until the motor turns and then it turns itself off. The problem is that as I said in the previous video is once it stops there's no holding power on this. So you can turn that by hand quite easily. When it's gone I can't turn it by hand you know. It's very powerful this motor. But that keeps the temperature down, having it turning on and off. So it turns on, it enables the stepper when it just before it starts moving and it turns it off as soon as it's finished. So I'll show you the pins in the other video, which I'll put a link on this one. I just wanted to give you the update about this. So that's one way to power this unit otherwise you need the USB plugged in now I did there are pins on here saying 5 and 0 but those are coming off the Arduino I wouldn't fancy like connecting a 5 volt input to the Arduino through that method and this this Arduino well quite a few of them have a voltage regulator on but that's not recommended really to knock down 12 volts to the 5 volts for the Arduino because it's only a small like voltage regulator I believe so it's best to use something like this and that's inputting 5 volts and it doesn't really not need to knock that down a lot so it's not going to take a lot of well energy to knock it down and that means it won't get, shouldn't get too hot. Whereas if you put in 12 volts, it's got to knock that in half. So that energy has to go somewhere with these voltage regulators. I think on this type, these type on this board. And it gets turned into heat, so it can overheat. Whereas this is um, like a switch, is it switch mode? I can't remember what to call them. It doesn't use the same method. Okay to knock down the voltage on these, these are quite a bit better, normally speaking. Yep, that's okay. Need to get all these wiring sorted out, that works okay. That was just a test, rough and ready. So I'll tidy up the wires, get this into a box, I think. Okay, I've soldered this book converter to the bottom of here. I'll show you the contacts just now, but I'll show you it working. So what I've got is the inputs coming in here, like these two wires from a, in this case at the moment, a PSU, which are, well, uh, like this. So I'm finding it hard to see here. I'm about to switch that on. This knocks it down to 5 volts. That's going in the bottom of this Arduino Uno, so it's bypassing the, the plug there, because if you have a plug in there, it's sticking out quite a bit, and I want this to fit in a box. And by the time I put the book converter in, it's going to be, you know, problematic, going to have, to have a massive box. And then the 12 volts, which is going in here, is split up here. Just a second. There we go. So it splits up there. One's going to the book converter input. One's going direct to the power supply for the board. Likewise with the negative here. So I'll put some details about this. Now th make sure you get this the right way around. In this case there is an arrow on this board 
and I've just been checking that the well it claims it claims it's five amps. It's non isolated. Input voltage can be four to thirty eight, but do not exceed thirty eight. And the output voltage can range from one point two five to thirty six and you can adjust the voltage by is it like potentiometer type thing here and you can adjust the voltage check that is 5 volts coming out for the Arduino before you sort of wire it up and plug it in remembering that if you do I'm going to have this off 12 volts but if you increase the voltage because this can go to 38 volts as well 12 to 38 it says on the CNC board and you might want that for steppers you need different stepper drivers to what I'm using here to do that well anywhere near that really but well, I'm just going to be using it so if you increase the voltage that's what input make sure you check the voltage output to the Arduino because if you increase the voltage the output will might increase as well and you've got to readjust this. But I'll turn it on and show you that it is working here. And then I'll show you the contacts under there. Right, turn it on there. And that is like a warning light to tell me it's at the limit of its... Now I'll ask it, I think I'll repeat this again. One turn for five lots of turns, then it pauses. This is all timed, controlled, and then I can press the buttons. I won't show you that. I don't want to muck about with the wise tool. So that's two. All under control of the, I think the column, did they call them a script or a sketch? I can't remember in Arduino because I keep on changing names of what they call a bit of program and code, which I'll put a link down below for all this. So it's the amount it's turning and after the fifth turn I ask it to rewind all the way all the, to the start and notice the yellow light comes on to say it's unfading there. So that's the sequence I've got there but that's all under control of the script how much it's turning, how often it's turning, how far it's turning whether it rewinds like I showed you there or not but you can see that's working now I'll show you the contacts let's turn the power off before turn this over. So I'll just repeat if you increase the voltage for the steppers check the voltage of the output on the book converter there. Now don't criticize my soldering so I've got positive going up here and negative going there. This other one is like if you've got well it's Basically, it has a switch in these contacts so that you can switch a battery in or the power in if you unplug it, so if you have the plug in. But that's the way I've got this wired. Don't criticize my soldering. So it's XL4015, I think that is. Check, I'll put a link down below anyway. XL4015 5 amp DC to DC voltage step down book converter LM2596 it's using. Got a heat sink on there just to make sure it doesn't get warm. Well, I'll keep the heat down. Right, I'm putting out a box for all this to go in now. So, in a way, now I don't need the USB. And I'm not using the power input jack either to a large extent. But normally you would need a USB plugged in there to power the Arduino and a separate power supply for the CNC machine. In a way this is still separate power supplies because it's still splitting up there into two separate power supplies. 